My name is Rafael Flores Jr. And uh, I'm the creator, writer, and executive producer of The Return of Kamazats, uh, which is a comic uh, published by Grim Core Studios. I was basically a fan since I was, I could even remember. Uh, I grew up, like I was born in 94. So I, you know, I grew up in the early, late 90s and you know, early 2000s. So like cartoons, like, uh, you know, the Spider-Man cartoon, X-Men, uh, the Batman animated series, like those were like the shows that I would watch. Um, and as I grew older, you know, I would play with the action figures. And, I, and uh, my, I remember my older cousins, they were big into comic books. So they gave me like a box of like old 90s comics that had like the death of Superman in it. It had a bunch of Batman issues, just random stuff at Spawn and like uh, like some Avengers, some like image, old image uh, card, uh, like like Savage Dragon. And um, it was just random issues, you know, and I would just read these and I'd read them over again and over and over again until the pages fall out. And, uh, you know, I, I would hang them up on my wall because I, I just loved comics like as a kid, you know, like. When I first got them, I was like, these are really cool. Like, I I, I kind of made it my whole personality as, like, going through school and stuff. Like, I would wear, like, a, a comic book T-shirt, like, every day. I wanted to be the the comic book guy, you know? And so, I you know, I read comics throughout, like, basically after, you know, six years old. I was reading comics, like, going to the comic book store, you know, trying to fill up those uh, those gaps that I, I had from, like, that first box of ha I had. Because I remember I had, like, a bunch of Batman stuff, so I would try to fill up those 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 arcs, you know, and I tried to get all the rest of the pieces that I, I didn't get to read. And that kind of just grew and grew and grew until I was like caught up with everything. And, but yeah, I've, I've been reading comics forever. And, and I guess I always kind of knew in the back of my head that I, I wanted to create stuff like, uh, you know, I always felt like a natural storyteller. I, I tell people like, um, when I was, I would play with, you know, action figures, you know, as a kid, I felt like that's like the beginning of your, my journey at least was being a storyteller and creating worlds and you know i had like batman i had spider-man and i had like all these characters so i would you know play with them you know together and you know i would use their characters that i you know remember from the tv shows and stuff like that and the comics and um and then that later on you know like you kind of get too old to play with toys so you know I, I started doing creative writing in high school and i would get uh you know complimented by a lot of my english teachers and stuff like that and and so I kind of like knew I had a knack for it, but I didn't really know how to get started, you know, because there's no there's no real school for it. Like you can't really go to co your local college and be like, I want to, you know, be a comic book creator. Like they most of them don't have that study. Um, there is some, you know, a small few. There's like a, the Kubert school, uh, which I, I did take an online course uh, later on. Um, but I, I did kind of struggle a lot when I was in community college. Um, I wanted first I was doing animation and I was trying to be an animator, but I couldn't draw really well. So I always felt like, well, I'll just write the cart the cartoons, right? Um, and and I, I was taking animation, I was taking uh, filmmaking, uh, uh like film appreciation and and uh video making and stuff like that. And I mean short films and in, in college, um, horror movies, of course, because like that's like the funnest and the most cheapest, like easiest like stuff to make, right? Um, so I, I did that in, throughout community college, always knowing like in the back of my head, like I really want to make comic books, like, you know, cause doing animation, it costs millions of dollars, uh, you know, doing films, like you got to get all these people together and they all got to agree to come, you know, shoot this thing real quick. And they all got to agree on the script and all that. And it was just, you know, too much a lot of times, especially with all the other filmmakers in, in school, like they want to do their own thing. Right. And, uh, so I was like, you know what, I just, I, I dropped out. I, I became a librarian. Um, because it was really easy to get that associate's degree and so I did that and I was like I just haven't looked back yet I've been like uh, just being a librarian and I was like well I'm just gonna write comics write movies like, I want to write I wanna, especially horror movies so um, yeah and, and that's kind of where I'm at now so I'm trying to live both of those dreams I met uh, Daniel who's Daniel Grimm the publisher He's also the editor and he he runs the Kickstarter page. He does he carries a lot of hats. Um it's just one guy really. And um uh it's it's been great. Uh because before this I was, you know, on my own, just learn trying to figure it out how to do it on my you know, by myself. I uh I wrote that short, I wrote a short script or a short uh comic book. That was just two pages, and um I called it the return of commonzots. 
uh, it was originally going to be called the Curse of Kamazats, um, but that was like taken for like a some someone had that title for like a video game project that they never finished or it was like a test or something. And I just didn't want to take it, but um, so I changed it to the Return of Kamazats, and I just wrote this short, uh, like two page short about this guy he goes into like this Mayan temple and like he touches this Mayan you know he touches the statue of Kamazats, and then like the next page. Is like where the reveal like comes out. It's right behind me, and it's like ah, you know, it was just a quick like thing. I wanted to do something fast and like I wanted because I, I wanted to make my first comic. You know what I mean? I wanted just to just get it over with because, you know, I I tried and failed a lot of times to get like longer projects off off the ground because it's a lot of work and um and I would hear a lot that uh, you need to start with short comics and do start with smaller pieces like two five pages. It's a good place to start. Um, so I was like, well, anyone can do a two page comic, surely. Right. So I, I, you know, I found an artist that I really liked, um, Azrael. uh, you know, I, I, uh, I paid him to do the, the short comic, uh, you know, I hired the whole team and, um, and then I entered that into a contest, um, negative space, the returning comments out was also a finalist and that got the attention of, uh, Daniel. Um, and he was like, Hey, um, I want to make this. Working with him has been great. Um, we've been working together uh, collaboratively. Like he's been my constant sounding board, like throughout the whole process. Because um, I I'd never written a series before. I'd done short, you know, I'd, I've written short films. I've written uh, different like short stories and stuff like that. But this was my first time really tackling a, a series. And you know, he's been there throughout that, getting me, you know, cover artists and for it, and helping me build connections with other artists and stuff. You know, he he's there to, you know, build a campaign and he's all about the marketing and stuff. So, like, I get to just kind of sit back a little bit and, and just, you know, I write the book, I'll, you know, I do the interviews and stuff and and I get to, like, just chill because I, I, all that all that work, actual work is it would be a lot for me, especially starting out, you know. Well, I must say that you guys are like the perfect pair, you and like everyone else who's working on this. It's yeah. it's seamless. It's like you Thank guys you. were always like meant to to be together. Everything looks fantastic. The story's great. The art is fantastic. Uh, the whole like getting the word out to everybody and even even the the printing, marvelous. I love it. Thank you. So Thank great you. job to, to everybody. Yeah, and I'm super proud, super proud of the publisher uh, for his effort. I mean, it's, it's his first time publisher, but. You know, he's been in the business enough to where, like, he knows what he's doing and, you know, he's doing a good job. And um, I'm, I'm just super proud to be on the team. And and I am super proud of the artists who are involved. Azrael is, is killing it. I mean, this is his first book, too, like first long series. And and like I wanted to push him. I wanted to, I wanted to do the stuff that I knew he would be able to nail because I I'd looked at his art before. You know, he, he does this cool gothic Hellboy almost inspired like type art. But it's also got like a lot of manga insp inspiration in it too, and there's, there's so many inspirations that I really dig, and I just want to be able to make a story that's like that shows his artwork to the world, you know, like in a very beautiful way, very gothic and dark and just perfect, you know. I feel like it's perfect for me as to, as the storyteller to write, and it's it's perfect for him. We just happen to have like angel names to match to, and and it's just like it, it just works, you know. I think it was meant to be, honestly. Um, it just I think it just was. The, the Kickstarter mentions that you you have a passion for telling, uh, like you said, gothic gothic tales with a Mesoamerican mythology to them. Yeah. Tell me more about that, because like you mentioned before, we have the Batman, we have the Spider-Man, we have all these like really USA centric yeah. comics. But this is like straight out of left field. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm glad I'm, I'm happy about that. I love that. Um I think it just comes from me. I mean, uh, I'm Mexican American myself, so um, studying the Aztecs and the Mayans, like that's just really interesting to me because it's part of my my DNA and my blood or whatever. Um, so I I feel a connection to that to that stuff to those stories. Um, like they're not mythology to me. Like it's religion in in, in a way. Um, like I'm very I'm very eclectic in my religion. I guess I kind of take from everything, but. Um, but mine and Aztec mythology is just super interesting to me and I, I can always dive into it and learn new things about it. And it, and it kind of reveals things to me about, you know, living life and, 
because yeah, it's not just like these gods that like you know like the greek gods that just come and kill people or whatever like they have like super they have other meanings that are more like spiritual in a way like um the gods do and and kamazots is just well he's just a badass right so like he's a he's not really he's a he's a, like a monster god you know like the gods created him as like this deity to of destruction and like to destroy the earth like like there's stories you can read um like you can learn all about uh Kamsatz. it's a you know it's a mayan mythological uh god or whatever but um yeah and he, he's just so fascinating right and and uh i remember learning about him um maybe through that mayan uh batman statue some guy created and it, it was like an it was looked like batman but it was a mayan looking uh, statue like um studying the mythology learning about mine and aztec mythology that stuff's already goth in its own like <laughs> like that stuff is so goth like it's all about blood and and sacrifice and torture and and you know doing this for the gods you know all this emotion and stuff and it's there's it's really in there and, and you just got to bring it out right because because goth culture is kind of like what maybe this is kind of led into right like the mexican culture has made a lot of gothic uh mexicans right so like um i don't know I, I i think that's just part of it i and i just wanted to just bring it out you know like it, why hasn't anyone done it so if no one's doing it then i'm gonna do it you know just like mi mixing mayan mythology and, and gothic culture i mean that's just who i am i mean that's just me trying to write stuff that i think it would be cool to see and read and what i want to see and read right um i would love to see this shit on in hollywood i would love to see this as a movie you know because I mean, latinos are the are like one of the fastest growing demographics, you know, in the United States, especially in the Southwest. Um, and and we're just studying about this. Like we're learning about our culture. We're reconnecting, you know, to our our, our indigenous roots and um and studying the the religion and trying to piece this stuff together, trying to maybe we're all kind of taking it and kind of seeing what we can do with it, you know, what we can learn from it and um and you know just living our lives. Where we left off in Kamsatz 1. So we have the twin brothers, Victor and Vincent, and they go to Mexico uh, and they both get attacked by a giant bat or what they think is a giant bat. Uh, mm -hmm. Vincent dies, Victor is injured, and he's also cursed. Where do we go in Kamsatz 2? If you can give me any spoilers or maybe little inklings of of story, what what kinds of stuff are we going to see in this this new chapter? I can't say much without spoiling it, but I will give you something. Um, I'll say that it picks off right after where we left off. So immediately, uh, Victor wakes up from that dream that he had at the very end, um, and we kind of see where he is. Uh, is this a hospital? What is this place? Um, he meets the characters there. We learn a little bit more about uh, Nurse Eatsley. <laughs> it's a, uh, but we'll learn a little, a little bit more about her. We'll uh, grow to kind of connect with her character a little bit more, and um, and kind of see. We'll, we'll just reveal. It's going to be reveal after reveal after, <laughs> and it, I call it the love issue. I'll just say that it's the love issue. It, it's love in a lot of ways. It's, <laughs> but um, it, it's going to be. I think it's going to be great. I think people are really going to dig it. Um, and I hope, I hope people really dig it and it's going to set up for the finale, which is going to be the third part. Um, and then that's going to be the end of this, uh, chapter. Um, and, and then after that, you know, who knows what we'll do after that, you know, we might continue the, this, uh, the series even after that. So. So you said there's going to be a part three, which is going to be like the finale, Maybe there will be a part four, maybe a part five, maybe part yeah, yeah. 75. I think, I think if fans want it enough, we're going to give them more. So, um, and, and I, I really do love these characters and, and the whole team involved really loves this story. And, and I, I know there's more here. Uh, and I think whenever you get to that last page on um, the very third issue, you're going to be begging for more and you're going to be d dying for more. started writing it i didn't really have a theme in mind or anything but like i kind of later on i was like oh this is probably what the message is 
of the story. And I think it really just has to do with compassion for, uh, you know, people who, um, let's just say, I don't know, ended their lives or something. Um, you know, I think that I've, I've heard a lot of, in my life, just a lot of people say negative things about people who do that. And they'll say things like they're weak or, or stuff like that, or, or they're selfish or something. And, and, and I just feel like, like I, I studied Mayan and the Aztecs and, and they talk about like, you know, how in the afterlife there's different afterlives and, and the way you die, depending on how you die, it affects in what afterlife you go to. And uh, suicide was actually um, just one of the ways you could, you can go into one of the afterlives apparently to them. And so I kind of wanted to tell a story about characters healing from that and learning to kind of like, accept it in a way and and kind of learn to move on and and um but it's really about like just learning to love the person that you know that did that and and kind of understand them a little bit you know and um and the way i did that was by making victor the um you know the the kind of more dark and gothic character um by giving him that dilemma of you know his mother died now his brother's gone and now he's at like the lowest point in his life ever. Like, can he do what his mother did? I'm just really proud and happy about it. So um, if people can take away that message, even if they take away another message, I don't care. Like uh, to me, it's not important, honestly, because I didn't write it with that message in mind or anything. I kind of just wrote it to give these characters like that, you know, angst and stuff and, and some kind of tension between them. Of One feels one way, one feels the other way. And, you know, they got to have that darkness of, you know, their mother and stuff. But like, um, I don't know. It's it's. I feel like it was always meant to be there in, in a certain kind of way, and um, I don't know. I, I love the story. I think I think it's beautiful, and I'm just super proud of it. You know. The Kickstarter is running through October, so um, you know, support uh, Latino creators, support uh, you know horror stuff, um, support Mayan uh, culture, and. Uh, you know, learn about it and, and get a great horror story out of it. Um, we're going to be running all through, you know, October 1st through the 31st. Um, so you can, you know, get the first issue. You can get the second issue. Um, we got four covers uh, for the second issue. Um, we got a cover, you know, by the Azrael, the main artist. We got a cover by uh, Alejandro Samada, who did the cool uh, EC Comics homage cover. Uh, and we got a, a very beautiful uh, cover by uh, Caetano Valenzuela. Uh, he did that nice gothic looking cover. And we got a, a chrome variant, which is like the foil variant, uh, done by the um, Ariel Medel, uh, who worked on TMNT versus Street Fighter. Uh, great guy. And um, super proud of all the artists involved on this project. Uh, the work that they've done is top notch. It's And um, and especially the the publisher, Grim Force Studios, and, uh, and, and the work that Daniel does and um and so yeah uh go support it please uh yeah this is my baby and um and <laughs> and i want to see this thing grow and, and reach as many people as possible